assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to cover chapter 2 which is developing marketing strategies and plan as the name itself is describing that this chapter covers several approaches and tactics for developing marketing strategies it also covers several perspective on planning and further we'll discuss how to draw up a formal marketing plan so these are the topics that we are going to discuss in detail in this chapter and in this video so the first topic is marketing and customer value before moving into any detail I'd like to give a brief review of what is marketing and what is a customer value. As we all know that marketing is basically all the actions and the processes that promotes or increase the demand of any product or service. And customer value is a measure of product worth to its all the alternatives present in the current market or in simple words it's the difference between the benefit of the product and its cost let's take an example for better understanding of customer value suppose we want to buy a smartwatch the very first thing that we'll do we go to the market or we search about all the latest models and the top companies that are offering that product in the next step from those selected companies we start selecting a top company which is giving us more features with least cost or which company is more reliable it totally depends on us or on every customer's perspective that what he or she wants it's not always necessary that every customer will place same customer value on the same product or service for instance some customer are willing to pay high price for a quality product or a high level service but it might possible that other will take the decision that some benefits are not worth that price so it should be the main objective of any business or company to deliver a high customer value product or service this can be done by fine tuning of value delivery process the value delivery process in marketing there is a traditional view although it is still in practice is that the firm makes something and then sells it and marketing is done during the selling process but a value delivery process is a new way and according to this marketing take place at the beginning of planning instead of making and selling the value delivery process begins before there is a product and continues throughout the development and after the launch there are three phases to the value creation and delivery sequence the first one is choosing the value providing the value and communicating the value the very first phase is choosing the value marketers must do research on market segment selecting target market and develop the value positioning the second phase is providing the value marketers must identify specific product features price and distribution the third phase is communicating the value this can be done by using internet advertising salesforce and this may include all the possible ways which we can use to announce and promote the product the value chain value chain is the tool for identifying ways to create more customer value proposed by Howard Michael 
It describes all the business activities it takes to create a product from start to finish. Example, design, production, distribution, and so on. According to this model, there are nine repellent activities, five are primary, and four are support activities. The primary activities are inbound logistic, that is, bringing material into the business. Second one is operation, which means converting material into final products. Third one is outbound logistics, or we can say shipping out final products. Fourth one is marketing, which includes sales, and last one is service. The support activities is handled by specialized departments which includes procurement means obtaining and paying for goods and services, technology department, human resource department, and frame infrastructure. Infrastructure covers the cost of general management, planning, finance, accounting, legal and government affairs. The frame task is to examine its cost and performance in each value creating activity. Benchmarking against competitors and look for ways to improve. Managers can identify the best practices of the world's top companies by consulting customers, suppliers, distributors, financial analysts and the media to see who seems to be doing the best job. Core Business Processes The frame success depends not only on how well the each department performs its work, but also on how well the company coordinates these activities to conduct core business processes. These business processes include the market sensing process, the new offering realization process, the customer acquisition process, the customer relationship management process, the fulfillment management process. So the market sensing process, it means gathering and acting upon information about the market. The new offering realization process, it means researching, developing and launching new high quality offerings quickly and within budget. The customer acquisition process, defining target markets and prospecting for new customers. The customer relationship management process, it means building deeper understanding, relationships and offerings to the individual customers. The fulfillment management process, receiving and improving orders, shipping goods on time, and collecting payments. Strong companies are re-engineering their workflows and building cross-functional teams to be responsible for each process. Core competencies. For any organization, its core competencies refers to the capabilities, knowledge, skills, and resources that constitute its defining strength. Companies today outsource less critical resources if they can get better quality or lower cost. The key is to own and nurture the resources and competencies that make up the essence of the business. A core competencies has three characteristics. First, it is a source of competitive advantage and makes contribution to perceive customer benefit. Second, it has applications in a wide variety of market and it is difficult for competitors to imitate. Businesses may need to realign themselves to maximize core competencies. Changes in the business fortunes often necessitate realignment and restructuring as Panasonic and other Japanese technology and electronic companies found. 
Realignment has three steps. First one is redefining the business concept. Second, reshaping the business scope, sometimes geographically. Third one is repositioning the company's brand identity. The central role for strategic planning. The purpose of strategic planning is to set overall goals for your business and to develop a plan to achieve them. It involves stepping back from your day-to-day -day operations and asking where your business is headed and what is its priority should be. Historically, only selected companies have stood out as master marketers. They focus on the customer and have well-behaved marketing departments who accept that customer is king and are also organized to respond effectively to changing needs. Marketers must prioritize strategic planning in three key areas. First one is managing the business as an investment portfolio. This means that we should expect from our business that it will earn a return or grow in a value over time. Second one is Assessing the market's growth rate and the company's position in the market. A very common tool for this could be sort analysis. It can offer a great insight into your company and industry's action. Sort stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Strengths and weaknesses refers to the positives and negatives the country itself holds. Opportunities and threats refers to the external variable that exists in a company's industry. By taking a look into the internal and external influence on your business, you can see where you should and you shouldn't focus resources. Third one is establishing a strategy. The company must develop a game plan for achieving each business long-term objective. Long-term objective may jump out early on when formulating a strategic plan. Also, long-term goals are larger in scope and will take longer to accomplish. A great example of long-term goal is expansion. Expansion into a new market is no easy task and doesn't happen overnight. For instance, we can take example of McDonald's that they didn't open its first international restaurant until nearly 20 years after its inception and it would take another 20 years for them to expand far enough to eat 10,000 locations in over 100 countries. Most large companies consist of four organizational levels, corporate, division, business unit, and product. Corporate headquarters is responsible for designing a corporate strategic plan. To guide the whole enterprise, it makes decision on the amount of resources to each division as well as on which businesses to start or eliminate. Each division establishes a plan covering the allocation of funds to each business unit within the division. Each business unit develops a strategic plan to carry the business unit into a profitable future. Each product level develops a marketing plan for achieving its objective. Marketing plan. Marketing plan is a roadmap that helps to set goals, understand target audience, and optimize the impact of marketing campaigns. In simple words, it helps you to get a clearer view of what, why, and how of all your marketing activities. Strategic marketing. Strategic marketing is focused on company's goal. 
the strategic marketing combines the market knowledge and the customer behavior. It brings together a series of different tactic design to help you to achieve your goals. Tactical marketing. Tactical marketing focuses on the details to achieve that goals. Creating tactics to support your marketing strategies involves detail profiling of your customers. Only by knowing your target demographics, you can choose the right advertising media and determine which marketing channel is most effective. Strategic marketing and tactical marketing are interdependent. Marketing plan starts with a strategy and followed by detailed tactics. Corporate and Division Strategic Planning All corporate headquarters undertake four planning activities. First, defining the corporate mission. Second, establishing strategic business units. Third, assigning resources to each strategic business unit. For assessing the growth opportunities. Defining the corporate mission. Over time, organizations or companies may need to change their mission as the time is changing rapidly. Some common examples of this we have seen in past are Amazon, eBay, Dunkin' Donuts. Amazon.com changed its mission from being the world's largest online bookstore to aspiring to be the world's largest online store. Similarly, Dunkin Donuts switched its emphasis from donuts to coffee. To define its mission, a company should address few questions like what is our business, who is the customer, what is the value to the customer? What will be our business? What should our business be? Business definition. Companies often define themselves in terms of product like auto business or clothing business. Market definition of a business describe business as a customer satisfying process. Products are the basic needs and customer group endure forever. For instance, transportation is a need. The horse, carriage, automobile, railway road, airline, ships and trucks are the products that meet the need. Crafting Mission Statement Mission Statement is collaboratively developed with managers, employees, and sometimes with customers' influence. It states the vision direction for the next 10 to 20 years. Good mission statements have five characteristics. Number one, they focus on a limited number of goals. Instead of including more goals or objective, it's better to more focus on already existing goals like to build total brand value by innovating to deliver customer value, customer leadership faster, better and more completely than our competitions. Second is they stress the company's major policy and values, narrowing the range of individual discretion lets employees act consistently on important issues. Third, they define the major competitive sphere in which the company will operate, like industry, market segment, geographical location, product applications. Number four, they take long-term view. Management should change the mission only when it ceases to be relevant. Number five, Mission statement should be as short and meaningful as possible. Establishing strategic business units. The purpose of identifying the company's strategic business is to develop separate strategies and, and assign appropriate funding. 
An SBO has three characteristics. First, it's a single business or a collection of related businesses that can be planned separately from the rest of the company. Second, it has its own set of competitors. Last, it has a manager responsible for strategic planning and profit performance who controls most of the factors affecting profit. Assigning resources to each SBU. Once it has defined SBUs, management must decide how to allocate corporate resources to each. Management could decide to grow, harvest, or draw cash or hold on the business.